Welcome to the monthly meeting of the Oklahoma City Youth Council. The Youth Council is a partnership between the city and Leadership Oklahoma City. The 18 Youth Council members learn about the challenges of local government firsthand, and the program provides them with an effective, meaningful channel to influence decisions affecting their homes, schools, friends, and community. While serving, the members learn about local government, its components, processes, goals, and successes. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to go ahead and start with Ward 1 report. Veronica? Hello, my name is Veronica Woods. I'm a senior at Western Heights High School, and I'll be giving your Ward 1 report. There has been sidewalk construction in intersection repairs going on to start the resurfacing project on 10th Street. We had a meeting led by the police department on January 22nd for all the apartment managers and owners to talk about the Oklahoma Safe Grant and to give them tips on how they can reduce the crime rate in their apartments. It was very well attended and everybody seemed very receptive to Master Sergeant Bob Scala. Scala. Scala? Had to say. The city also hosted our annual state legislator breakfast on January 15th to inform our state legislators the problems that we saw as a city and what they can do to help help our city function better and be more efficient. That's all for my report. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kirsten Alfonso. I'm a senior at Putnam City High School. Today I'll be giving the report for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. On February 27th through March 1st, Marvel Universe Live will be at the Chesapeake Arena. Feld Entertainment brings its live action arena show featuring more than 25 Marvel characters for one ultimate battle between good and evil. February 26th through the 28th, OSSAA High School Wrestling Championships will be at the State Fair Park. Athletes from Class 3A to 6A across the state compete for the state, national, state championship title. Approximately 7,500 students, coaches, and family members are expected in Oklahoma City during this three-day competition. There are three events coming up at the, Oklahoma, or at the Civic Center Music Hall this month. Romeo and Juliet will be February 13th through the 15th, performed by the OKC Ballet. Pixar in Concert will be February 20th through the 21st, performed by the OKC Philharmonic. And Celebrity Attractions Performance of Camelot will be February 21st through March 1st. The renaissance and continued growth of the city has fueled much interest for publications and journals to write about. We were featured in three in-flight magazines between October and December something that is not normally seen from any major city in a three-month span. National Geographic Traveler also included Oklahoma City in its New Year's list of the, of the 20th, 20 best trip destinations for 2015, alongside countries such as India, Switzerland, and Peru. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ward 1. Ward 2. Hello, my name is James Williams. I am a senior at Harding Charter Preparatory High School and I represent Ward 2. In the absence of my fellow representative, Ryan Maidu, I will be presenting both the Ward 2 Commission and Ward Reports. First, the Ward Report. The Watertown Hall meeting, hosted by Ed Shadid at the Tower Hotel this past month, was a big success. Despite the disgruntlement of a few attendees, the speakers were mostly well received by the crowd of several hundred concerned citizens. In other news, plans are still underway for a streetscaping project on Western and in the area around Northwest 40th. For the Ward 2 Commission report, the Historic Preservation Commission will today be reviewing and nominating the Fountain of Faith Church Building on Southwest 6th Street for inclusion in the National Registry of Historic Places. This concludes my Ward 2 Commission and Ward reports. Thank you, Ward 2. Ward 3. Hello, my name is Tyler Thomas. I go to Mustang High School and I represent Ward 3. I will be given the Commission report. At the January Airport Trust meeting, the Trust approved a contract for professional services with the FSB Associates for the terminal expansion project in the amount of $7 million. FSB will be designing the project. Additionally, year-end passenger numbers reveal a significant growth over 2013 and mark 2014 as the year with the largest number of passengers to ever pass through the airport. A total of 3 million passengers flew in and out of Oklahoma City's commercial airport during the calendar year. Cockpit has just 
launch their pilot program for the night bus service since beginning on January 25th. Routes 11 and 23 will now run until midnight. It has been decades since Oklahoma has had bus services this late. Additionally, riders, ridership continues to increase with the service enhancement that were imp implemented in the spring. Riderships on M through F routes bus services is up to 8%. They have a new management company to help them improve the Spokies bike share program, and that concludes my commission report. Thank you, Ward 3. Ward 4. Good morning. My name is Seth Reed. I'm a senior at Capitol Hill High School, and I will be presenting the Ward 4 report. To start off, the Oklahoma City School District has abruptly decided to change the mascot of the Capitol Hill Redskins in the middle of the school year. Students who felt otherwise staged a protest this protest lasts two days and did not overturn the decision. Santa Fe, the Santa Fe School Board also added 1,000 students to their schools. This includes the high school, the middle school, and the elementary school. In other news, Brahms is building a new, nicer, bigger facility than the one that's on 59th and Walker. This one will be located on 74th and Western and will be open no later than February the 10th. This concludes my report. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Juan Morales, and I'm a senior at Santa Fe South High School. And today I'll be giving the commission report. On January 29th, there was a new application presented to the Planning Commission by Salazar Home Incorporated. The purpose for this request is to develop a personal storage facility for boats and RVs. The maximum size of individual units within the building buildings should be 1,200 square feet. Also, the OKC Riverfront Redevelopment Authority has asked to rezone 16, 1601 North Sooner Road. And the purpose of this request is to develop a temporary passenger railway facility. They will be working with the OKC zoning ordinance to get this motion approved. So if you're thinking of rezoning any property, make sure to contact the Planning Commission. This is all that I have for my commission report. Gracias. Thank you, Ward 2, at large. Good morning, my name is John Teague. I'm a senior at Mount St. Mary Catholic High School in Oklahoma City, and I'm an at-large representative. Significant progress on MAPS 3 projects was made in January. At the Oklahoma River, construction on the bottom pool of the new Riversport Rapids Center is underway. The bottom pool, which spans 110 feet in width and 165 feet in length, will serve as the floor of the man-made whitewater channels. Concrete for the foundation of the Riversport Rapids building itself also was poured in January, as well as concrete for the pump house, which will accommodate all hydraulic equipment used to activate and direct the whitewater channels. Northwest of the Boathouse District at State Fair Park, construction progresses on the new Expo Center. During the improvements to State Fair Park, which will be completed in time for the 2016 State Fair, a 19th century steam engine that has been housed at the park since the 1950s was relocated to the Oklahoma Railway Museum. Completed improvements at State Fair Park that did not displace any steam engines include parking lot upgrades and renovations to Jim Norick Arena. Thank you, and that concludes my master report. Thank you, at large. Ward 5. My name is Tyler Dang, and I'm a senior at Classen School of Advanced Studies. I represent Ward 5, and this is my commission report. The Family Awareness and Community Teamwork Program, or FACT program, went successfully in 2014. Run out of the former Hathaway Recreation Center, the FACT program targets at-risk boys and girls. The Oklahoma City Police Department leads this push to help keep kids aged 8 to 18 out of gangs and away from illegal acts and drugs. They averaged 25 kids per week last year. Thank you to the officers that helped to create a family type system for many of the OKC youth. Also, congratulations to the person who caught a record championship fish at Lake Stanley Draper. The crappie weighed two pounds, three ounces, and was 15 inches long. This was a new lake record. As the weather hopefully improves, please apply for a fishing permit and get out and enjoy the day. That concludes my word report. Hello, my name is Jordan Darrow, and I am a junior at Mount St. Mary Catholic High School, and I proudly represent Ward 5. Today, I will be presenting the Ward 5 report. Construction should begin shortly 
at Southwest 134th Street in Santa Fe for a new grocery store. The City Council has recently approved the plans. Walmart is coming to Southwest 104th Street and I-44. This Supercenter's plan was just announced and will go to the Planning Commission within the next month for review. This will be yet another exciting addition for Ward 5. This past week, City Council has approved $2 million worth of street repairs and reconstruction for roads damaged in the May 2013 tornadoes. This will affect both Wards 4 and 5. These repairs are now possible because most of the houses, buildings, and businesses damaged in the tornadoes are now substantially complete. The roads may now be repaired. A new office development was improved, approved by the Planning Commission last week. This new development is planned for Southwestern at 164th Street. This plan will be before Council to be reviewed in approximately three weeks. Thank you, and this concludes my Ward 5 report. Thank you, Ward 5. Ward 6. Good morning, I'm Chase Neal, a senior at U.S. Grant High School, and here's a Ward 6 Commission report. The staff at Public Works have returned the engineering plans for the May Avenue Dam repairs to White Engineering. The repairs include concrete work and painting to the metal portions of the lock and dam. The repairs are supposed to take place in December of 2015, so the repairs will not interfere with this spring's river cruises. This concludes my Ward 6 River Commission report. Thank you. Hello, my name is Samantha Basave. I'm a junior at Harding Fine Arts Academy, and I will be representing Ward 6. <clears throat> the seventh annual St. Patrick's Day block party will be held on March 15th in the middle of Midtown area from 11 to 12 p.m. Uh, love your city. Elemental Coffee will be holding a um, an event called Love Your City, where people will be informed on how they can become more a part, become more um, involved in their city, and can hold um, committees and and serve in the in the serving boards. Um, this will be held on February fourteenth. Um, the rehabilitation for this for San, for the Santa Fe station is nearing completion. Um, it will establish a connection between downtown and Bricktown through a pedestrian tunnel. The Downtown Design Review Committee will be holding their meetings in the Bricktown Police Station on Wednesday at 9. And last but not least, I'd like to thank all the police officers and the firefighters for risking their lives in order for us to be safe. That's really something to be grateful for. This concludes my report for Ward 6. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you, Ward 6. Ward 7. Hello, my name is Kara Traster. I am a junior and I will be giving the Ward 7 report and commission report. The City Council recently met to reapprove the collaboration of the Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math focused after school program that is held at Moon Academy. It began on January 1st and will run until June 30th. Also, the Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust entered into agreement with Rock Island Plow to help finance a commercial office building at 29 East Reno Avenue. Now for the commission report. The Oklahoma City Zoo celebrated the Gorilla Tattoo's 40th birthday in mid-January. The zoo had quite a party for the silverback gorilla, including presents, crafts for children, and cupcakes from Cuppies and Joe. The new baby elephant was finally given the name Akara, and she had more than 19,000 people visit her on Martin Luther King Day which was the zoo's second highest single attendance day ever. This concludes my report, thank you. Thank you, Ward 7, Ward 8. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Courtney Duckett. I'm a senior at Putnam City North High School and I represent Ward 8. Today, I'll be giving the commission report. What's new? In January, Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust sold revenue bonds to continue funding improvements of the capital. We received the funding of $67 million yesterday, Tuesday, February 3rd. Also, the purpose of our water conservation ordinance and resolution is to avoid water shortage in lakes through conservation. This ordinance urges a decrease in outdoor water use as the volume of water stored in our lakes decreases. Today, the volume of all of our lakes combined is only 52% of what it's supposed to be, so outdoor watering has been limited to every other day. 
The conservation level will change at 50% to two day a week outdoor watering. Postcards and other informative items are ready to mail to customers just in case we drop below 50%. And we're hoping that spring rains refill our lakes as they normally do. Hope you all have an amazing February and this concludes my commission report. Hello, my name is Sabrina Chaudhry from Deer Creek High School with the Ward 8 report. Business development has been flourishing in Ward 8. Firstly, the Health Hub continues to expand to Ward 8 as it welcomes yet another medical center. The St. Anthony's Healthplex will be located on Northwestern Avenue in Memorial Road, offering a pediatric ER and MRI services. The St. Anthony's Healthplex is expected to be completed by February 2015. Secondly, Chisholm Creek continues to flourish with the new developments, booking both Cabela's and Top Golf. The eco-friendly environment offers miles of walking and biking trails as the city's first pedestrian-friendly mixed-use developments. Its direct access from the highway makes it the ideal place to shop, dine, work, and entertain. Uh, thirdly, SPEC has started construction on its new office buildings in the ward as well. And finally, on the political scene, the primary elections are fast approaching. March your calendars for March 3rd, 2015. And that concludes my Ward 8 report. Thank you, everybody. The Oklahoma City Youth Council meets regularly throughout the school year. For an application or more information on the Youth Council program, call 463-3340.